Hi everyone, I'm finally back with another edition of the American Chess Magazine Puzzle Calendar. We're just going to awkwardly skip over the two weeks that I missed. Uh, let's get into the puzzles. This is the puzzle for Monday, July 3rd. It was composed by Eric Bartelt in the year 2000. Again, same drill as always, white to move, mate in two. Pause the video here if you want to solve the puzzle for yourself. For me, this puzzle had a difficulty rating of 4 out of 10 and a satisfaction rating of 5 out of 5. White's pieces are doing a very good job of trapping Black's King. Also good news, in the time that it took me to post this video, Chesswise has, has now fixed the problem, so when I draw arrows, the, the top of the screen is still uh, remaining as normal, so that's nice. So back to the puzzle, Black's King is super trapped, any one check will be enough. However, Bishop C6 check fails to Rook takes C6, and Bishop G6 check fails to Bishop takes G6. White has no other immediate checks. I first thought of trying to maneuver for my Rook or Queen in, but after rook takes d2, unfortunately, black can play queen takes d2. And if white tries to maneuver for the queen in somewhere, queen h3 to uh, h5, here black can simply take. And if queen to g2, then bishop takes e4, and the bishop is conveniently guarding the g6 square. Also, I realized that it's probably better if I just left my queen and rook where they are right now, because the queen, uh, that way black's queen on e1 can't move anywhere. The only other piece that white could try to use to give checkmate is this knight. Knight d5, threatening knight to f6, looks like a very nice plan, until you notice that black has the super annoying defense bishop e5. Bishop e5 is black's response to most of white's uh, knight moves. Knight f5, threatening knight g7, also fails to bishop e5, as does knight g4, threatening knight to f6. But I still felt like the, moving the knight was the correct move, and then I realized that there might be some sort of um, pin or interference going on. For example, knight g4, I know I said it fails to bishop e5, but as an example, it looks like black cannot take on g4 because of queen f7 mate. In a similar vein, I thought of knight to c4. Now if knight takes, then rook d8 is checkmate. However, black can just play rook takes c4, still ma maintaining control of c6, and there's no mate. Therefore, the correct move is knight to c2, blocking both the bishop and the rook. So whichever one black takes with, white goes to the other square, and it will be mate. Also, white is threatening bishop c6, which here, because black's queen and all the rest of their pieces are so stuck, it's kind of hard to prevent. If knight f takes e4, then we get back to the pins that we were talking about earlier. And knight d takes e4 allows rook to d8 checkmate. This is the puzzle for Tuesday, July 4th. It was composed by Dirk van Dusier in the year 1980. Again, if you want to solve this puzzle for yourself, then go ahead and pause the video here. For me, this puzzle had a difficulty rating of 5 out of 10 and a satisfaction rating of 5 out of 5. I feel like the main difficulty was in rejecting all the forcing sequences. For example, bishop takes g6 check, king e5, knight d3, unfortunately black has king takes d6 as a resource. And then you come to realize that um, there are two things that are really saving black here. One, the d6 rook is hanging, so the king has his place to run. And two, the queen is pinned, so queen f4 checkmate is not legal. So you realize that the forcing sequences unfortunately don't work. And you also realize that black has a threat, which is to play bishop takes f7 check, which would completely destroy white's chances of giving mate in two. So it actually simplifies the problem quite a bit. You know it has something to do with this diagonal. Obviously running the king away, something making this not check isn't going to help because white has no additional checkmating ideas here. White could try playing queen takes b3 with the idea of threatening queen to d3 or something. Now if king e5, white has the option of queen d5 checkmate. Unfortunately, black has a nice defense, which is rook takes d6, covering these mating squares, and the king can run to e5 if necessary. Therefore, the correct answer is to play rook to d5. If bishop takes d5, queen takes his mate. White is also threatening knight g5. Black's only way to stop this is by um, opening the queen up, but unfortunately if e6, bishop takes g6's mate because the rook is being blocked. And if e5, then white has queen f4, the rook is conveniently pinning the e5 pawn. On the first turn, knight d5 wouldn't have worked as a solution because it allows black to simply run away on to d4. Knight d5 was the only other move that kind of dealt with the threat of bishop takes f7 check. This is the puzzle for today, July 5th. It was composed by Ilja Mikan in the year 1960. For me, this had a difficulty rating of 3 out of 10 and a satisfaction rating of 5 out of 5. Obviously, it looks, it looks completely crazy with all of black's pawns. But once you start looking at the variations, you realize that the key here is preventing black's escape. For example, if rook takes f6, allowing king to g4, then the king can safely tuck itself away on h5. The only ways to control this escape square are knight takes f6, queen c8, and rook to e4. 
Now, knight takes f6 doesn't work because black has king to f4 and white has no additional checks. Queen c8, this looks very hopeful. It's like, oh, threatening maybe some discovered check somewhere. But unfortunately, after king to g4, white still has nothing. If knight takes f6, the king runs back. And if rook to e4, discover check, then black can still run to h5. Therefore, the correct answer is rook to e4, guarding this g4 escape square. If king takes e4, then queen e6 is checkmate. The king is blocked by all their pawns. After rook e4, oopsie. If black instead tries to play g4, then queen d5 is still checkmate. If Finally, if bishop takes g8, then knight g3 is checkmate because this escape square has been covered. So those are the puzzles for this half week. I feel like they were a bit more on the easier side, but they were still very cool to look at. There was a more artistic look to them. They don't look very realistic. There's no way they would happen in real game, but they're still very fun to solve. And especially when you realize that there's still only one solution. So I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, if you enjoy my content, please like and subscribe. And that's all for today. Bye.